Hi guys, this individual, gracing your screen via Google Images, is Martin Seligman. Martin Seligman is a psychologist, very well-known psychologist, who has been around and about um, doing his stuff since the mid-1960s. He's considered a co-founder of positive psychology. So positive psychology being the... The positive side of psychology, the study of happiness, the study of gratitude, the study of hope, <laughs> the study of what makes us feel good, well-being, etc., etc. That's not what I want to talk to you about today because when I was an undergrad, Martin Seligman was famous for just one thing and that was an experiment that to psychology undergraduates all over the world is known as the Seligman's Dogs Experiment. And this experiment is one of the most unethical, one of the most gruesome and torturous that I can think of in psychology. And that's why I'm using Seligman's Dogs as, as the first in a series um, that I'm going to start on this channel about unethical psychology. As I've said in probably several previous videos now, um, I do want to start including more psychology on this channel because it's one of my areas of expertise. I think I've got something to offer veganism by incorporating psychology into my videos. So don't worry if you've got absolutely no interest in psychology at all. Um, it's not going to become the Michelle Law Psychology Channel. Um, I'm going to still cover a wide range of um, content, vegan and otherwise. But I want to make a contribution to vegan, um, to vegan YouTube and I can do that through my area of expertise. The idea behind this series um, of unethical psychology is because I am an ethical vegan and so what better way of introducing more psychology into this channel than to look at um, the experiments that have been the they've made I mean I it's not it's not too rash a claim to say that um, experiments such as Seligman's dogs have made the foundation of psychology and animal experiments. They are littered throughout the undergrad psychology uh, syllabus, at least, at least in the UK, and I'm guessing in the US as well. So what was so horrible about the Seligman's dogs experiment? Well, I can't find online, I can't find an actual picture of the Seligman's Dogs experiment. In future videos in this series, I'm going to be able to show you actual videos and actual pictures of what happened during the experiments. But I can't find um, anything that was, that, that is a real photograph of those experiments. We're finding lots of pictures about it, but no actual pictures. Oh, is that one? I think that's just a, a, a random dog looking unhappy. And that's also another random dog looking unhappy and another random dog looking unhappy. If you can find me a video clip or a photograph of the actual experiment itself, please let me know the link and you know, let me know. Right, so what was dreadful about Seligman's dog's experiment? Seligman, in the mid-1960s, he, he was working under a supervisor, so he was a young man at the time, um, and he's be before I was born, before I was born, he was working on this experiment, but well, that's, that's completely irrelevant. The reason why this has become such a um, a big deal in psychology and why it's covered um, in the undergraduate syllabus is because through his work with dogs, he developed the learned helplessness theory, which has been applied to depression. It's been applied to why 
um, people don't leave domestically violent relationships, etc. So it's had lots of applications to human psychology. However, just because it's had applications doesn't make it ethical and it doesn't make it right. So what did Seligman do to these dogs? Okay, so he designed an experiment where he had um, a series of dogs who were restrained by harnesses, initially restrained by harnesses. Okay, so first of all, there was a control group who didn't receive anything bad. Nothing bad happened to them. These dogs were all hunky-dory. They were just in the lab. They were absolutely fine. The other dogs received electric shocks. They were relatively mild electric shocks, but nevertheless, they were uncomfortable and they were repeated, repeated electric shocks. In one pair of dogs, the dog could learn to cease the shocking by pressing a lever. So it could learn that it could have control. It could make its situation better. However, another group of dogs received shocks intermittently. They had no control. They couldn't do anything about it. Everything was out of their control. But those dogs became meek, subdued. They just became helpless. They just became helpless. In those dogs, it's not surprising that there's, there's no pictures on the internet because, you know, dogs, when they, when they look unhappy, a dog looks unhappy. You know, the puppy dog eyes, they, they look dreadful. They look dreadfully sad, you know. I'm a dog lover. I've always been a dog lover. I've got four dogs here. I've got two dogs. No, I've got one dog in this room at the moment. Um, I couldn't imagine, you know, of all the animals that you could do something horrible to, a dog is, is just the worst animal to do anything to because they just look so sad. Um, anyway, these dogs, once they've been shocked repeatedly and knew they couldn't do anything about it, what Seligman did was put them in a cage where the floor, through the floor, shocks were being administered. So the dogs, again, they, they, they just curled up. They were just so subdued and couldn't do anything about it. However, they were given a way out. So if they jump, jumped over a small hurdle, they could get to the other side of the cage, the other side of the box where the floor was not shocked. There was no shocks through the floor. Dogs previous that were either in the control group or they had control over their lives, just jumped over the hurdle. You know, once they were shocked, they just jumped over the hurdle. But those who'd become, those that had learned to be helpless, even when they were given a route out, they couldn't move they couldn't do anything about it they were just helpless they felt hopeless like it says here learned helplessness results from being trained to be locked into a system a system of of of, of terror a system of bad things happen to me i can't get out of this bad things just happen to me and there's nothing i can do to solve it it can involve a state of apathy or passive behavior induced by negative conditioning so you can see how that state is learned and it's and it's you've learned to be helpless and you can see how it can apply to certain human situations the only positive thing i can say is that well there's two positive things i can say firstly seligman stop doing experiments on dogs I still can't think positively about Seligman. I'm sorry, I can't. Martin Seligman, I can't think positively about you. If you can honestly say you regret those experiments, I might be able to forgive you. <laughs> um, but I'd never forget that, you know, that, that my whole psychology career has been 
has been marred by these horrible unethical experiments i don't care if they've if they've given us insights into human psychology i i don't care about that there's other ways we could have learned about human psychology the other positive thing about this is that there's no way we in psychology would allow these experiments to take place these days so thankfully the seligman's dogs experiment and the other experiments that i'm going to talk about in this series they're a thing of the past and that has to be a good thing so what do you think guys if you have a comment please leave it below you've got anything particularly you want me to cover in terms of unethical psychology then let me know and consider subscribing to the channel Later, guys